Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, January 31st, 2020. And this is our weekly video. We'll look back at last week's eBay and Katawiki auction results, see what's coming up next week, and uh, other news that's going on. One of the things I did want to mention was uh, when you go to see the newsletter page this week on Bitemout, you're going to see a second video, and that is for Rob Michael's sale um, over in Belgium. He's got a, in Bruges, he's got a sale coming up. Uh, uh, on the 15th and 16th of February. Uh, we posted it on the member pages a week ago with a, 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 the images and so forth, some great things. And we're going to have that video posted here on the newsletter page this week, uh, and everybody can take a look at it. It's quite a sale, a lot of good Chinese porcelain, a lot of Kung Shi, a lot of late Ming stuff, a lot of good bronzes, jades, and some really good Japanese um, items too, especially some Japanese uh, Meiji period bronzes. They're quite nice. You want to check them out. The other thing that we've added this week, and it's kind of fun uh, uh, for the, on the member page, is we decided to put up sort of a rogues gallery of fakes, uh, modern fakes, Chinese porcelain, and uh, their auction results. And they're over here, and you can fan through them, and you can see some pretty impressive looking pieces at a glance you're, you're going to be surprised that these are copies uh, some of you some of you will know uh, of course uh, but the, the, some of the porcelains are very convincing looking and they're all copies okay these are all fakes one of the pieces that, that amazed me was this this one particular one that turned up it's a it's a, a yellow uh, Peking enamel glass example wait for the page to load here here we go um, let's see here uh, there it is this one this this particular one is a, it's a copy of a of a of a, of a very well known uh, a vase that just sold a few months ago. I'm amazed at how fast they got this onto the market. Um, there was a. a, a there it is. Okay, those of you that remember this, this was um, Bohemia Auctions. They, they sold copies, but here is a, a copy of that famous glass pouch vase that sold for millions a few months ago. Okay, and it went, a copy has already come onto the market. It's quite astounding when you think about that. It came on the market in November. I think the glass example sold in the spring. That just shows you how fast the copyists can get to work when they when they have the, uh, uh, the the wish to do so. All right. Now on to uh, eBay auction results. The one of the things was this. It was a 19th century, uh, uh, probably Edo to Meiji period, probably early Meiji period, barber bowl. But it was a nice piece of Amari, and it was modeled after a much earlier type that was done in the early 18th century. Uh, nice looking little bowl, like the geisha on it and the flower cart and all that business. And uh, it went for $132, which is a pretty good buy. Uh, that was a nice buy for that. It's sort of an unusual form. And uh, those of you like Amari, I hope one of you got it. And now moving along over to this was that uh, the mirror with the enameled and silver work with the jade belt hook handle. I like this a lot. As you recall last week, we talked about it a bit. I thought the uh, the, the belt uh, loop on it was quite nice. Uh, here's a picture of the glass. The mirrors in these are never in good shape because they've sort of gone through through a long history of abuse. And but the but the piece itself, the enameling was all nicely done, all beautifully intact. Uh, the, there was a jade plaque added to the back, but you notice all the stones are in place. It was in good condition, and it ended up doing quite well. It brought four thousand one hundred and eleven dollars. But it was a particularly good one. Uh, it really was. And uh, it, it brought a good price. All right. And then on to this was the four panel uh, uh, silk uh, uh, dragon uh, setup with the four, four or five clawed dragons and, and the wave border at the bottom and all that. Nicely done. Very nicely mounted, I must say. It's not, of course, the way it probably came originally. It was mounted on this later. But they did a good job. It looked very nice. And uh, ended up selling for $1,525. It was sold by a seller out in Stat Staten Island, New York, had that handies, handies antiques. And then on to this, the 18th century Fu Lion top faceted uh, Yi Xing uh, teapot. This was a nice one. There was a one similar to it that just sold a week ago, but it had additional decoration uh, banding around the midsection here, as you recall. We talked about it. And uh, this is one that's, that's plain and simple. It's also very elegant and uh, it looks to be in quite good condition. And it ended up going for $821, which is a perfectly good price. Yixing Pottery is, 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 is sort of firmed up its base and seems to be holding on to its values pretty well over the last six or seven years. And then on to 
this. Here's another one. This was that contemporary Yixing uh, teapot shaped like a, a melon or a gourd with these root devices coming over it, signed and all that. This was a nice little teapot. And uh, I think somebody got a heck of a nice buy. Because it wasn't terribly old, people still don't understand. And somebody got it for $212. I think that was a terrific buy. I kind of expected that would bring maybe 600 to 1000 So I think that was a very, very good buy. Somebody did great with that. And on to this, the lotus form 18th century famille rose dish. This pattern is a very has always been a popular pattern with these pink lotus petals running out. The same pattern appears on bowls, uh, appears on cups, uh, and it appears obviously on shallow bowls and plates as in, as in this example. Here's a side shot of it so you can get a better idea of what it was formed like. Here's a picture of the back of it, typical 18th century back. And in the end, it did pretty well. It brought $1,213, which is what they bring. All of these, these 18th century lotus uh, bowls uh, always have collectors after them. There are people that collect only these, and they, they get pretty excited when one comes along. All right, and then on to this was this the double quail uh, famille rose uh, bowl that our friend uh, uh, William and over uh, in England had up. It was a very attractive little bowl. It's a famous pattern. They did them on imperial porcelains. And uh, this one was a later 18th century one, and it brought $3,523. But it was not an imperial one. It was just a good quality 18th century example. But very nice. And then on to this. This was sort of like a little bargain of the week. If you like Batavia ware, uh, this was a very nice 18th century, probably Kung Shi, uh, Batavia ware uh, small teapot. Now, it had a couple of issues. It had a, a break here on the handle and had a nick somewhere. But these kinds of repairs to the handles, a good restorer can handle that, take care of that pretty quickly. Um, and it had a nick under the rim, which can be filled. It's not, none of this is big stuff. Uh, it's, it's just that it, you know this does hold the handle on, so you want to get it tended to, but it can be repaired fairly easily. But somebody bought this for $38.60, all right? And it's for $38.60. It's still a perfectly good shelf piece to have in your house, but if you really wanted to go to town on it, probably for $120 you could get the thing looking pretty much perfect uh, with a local uh, restorer that just spend a few minutes touching it up for you. All right, and then on to this, the big crackle glaze Famille Rose planter. Uh, this is a nice bowl. It sold a few weeks ago, and I guess the guy didn't pay the bill on it, and this poor seller had to end up putting it up again. Um, you know, I, I, I do wish eBay would crack down and set kicking off their site people that don't pay their bills. Uh, a lot of sellers have been saying that for years, but they really need to. And uh, this was a nice thing, and it ended up reselling, and it brought $1,056, which I think is just about what it brought last time, maybe 100 less, but hopefully this time whoever bought it will buy it. I don't know why you wouldn't buy it. It's a heck of a nice thing. Take it home, put a nice plant in it. And uh, then you had the pair of um, uh, 18th century Famille Rose precious object plates. This was a nice pair. And uh, the, the objects were beautifully drawn. There were lots of things to look at here. And it's a nice matched pair uh, with the standard. This is a sort of a standard rim pattern that they used on these. But I like the way the center was done. Very attractive. With incense burners, tables, teapots, uh, all kinds of stuff, books and whatnot. And uh, look at this. They, 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 they didn't sell. They didn't get up to their reserve. And I don't know why the guy would reserve those. All right. Uh, it's kind of surprising. They're, they're 18th century. They're very nice. But... Um, people, people get too excited with their reserves, and they end up killing a good sale. All right, and then on to this was another pair, or not a pair, but they're, they're fairly similar, uh, mid-18th century Famille Rose uh, plates. And uh, they ended up selling for $208, which is about right. Perfectly nice, and you get, you get two diff very different plates for uh, one buy. And uh, the shipping was pretty reasonable, too. This from Sweden to here, it was only be $40. So don't be afraid to bid on things in Europe. <laughs> And uh, you always check the shipping price because the, the, I'm, I'm, I'm always surprised that the shipping here sometimes is so reasonable. And then over here to this robe, this was a nice early 20th century women's, woman's robe. It was in beautiful condition. Uh, it was a jacket, really, more than a robe. But the needlework on it, the stitching on it was pristine. Uh, and if you took the time, if you like silk or you want to learn about it, this was a good example because when you, when you get this guy took very nice, sharp pictures. And you can see how good the, the stitching on this was. Here's even a better shot. All right, They used to call these blind stitches years ago. There was this silly myth that the, the forbidden stitch. Um, Needleworkers weren't supposed to use this particular stitch because it would cause blindness. Um, that's an old wives' tale. It isn't true. 
There was no such thing. But at any rate, uh, it was a nice looking robe and it ended, a jacket. And it ended up bringing $1,325, which I think was a very fair price for a piece in that good a condition. I don't agree with them that it was 19th century. I think it was early 20th, but that's just my opinion on it. Uh, and then on to this. This was another piece that uh, our friend William had up. It was a Chinlung Markham period uh, copper red bowl. A couple of people didn't weren't certain that it was. I, I have no doubt that it was. Um, so you can take it from there. I'm pretty certain that bowl is absolutely fine from what I can see. And uh, I guess a number of people thought so too because it brought $3,584, which is in the range for one of these. It's really a, more of a saucer. These are not terribly big, but uh, very nice quality. Very, very nice quality. And had that nice creamy white foot and, and nice thick glaze. So it was pretty good. And that was about it for the week. But we wanted to take a look at some of the things that are coming up um, uh, that, that, that are, are coming up this week or that uh, are uh, uh, some of the things that maybe that sold over on Katawiki. Um, for example, uh, this, this sold last week on Katawiki, a nice Japanese uh, portable home shrine with three figures in it, lacquered doors and all that. And look at that, $676. Can't beat it. That was a nice thing, a nice old piece, about 100, probably 120 years old or so, and ended up selling for $676. And then over here is this. This is coming up. This is for sale this week. If you like cloisonne, um, and you don't have uh, Uldry's book, you want to get it. The Pierre Uldry collection of um, uh, Cloisonne, really a wonderful book. It's, a sta it's become a standard reference on the topic. Um, yeah, he had a, a Pierre Uldry, had a, had a great collection, and it's well written. I've owned this book since it came out. It's worth having, and I paid a lot more than eleven fifty, which is where it is right now. It closes on Sunday, but if you, if you only want to own one book on Cloisonne, this is maybe the book you want to own. It's good, it's well written, and you'll get a lot out of it. It's a nice reference. All right, and then on to this was that little uh, fan-shaped porcelain uh, Chan Chi piece that's on right now. This is Art Studio Gallery has this up. Um, they have it as Chan Chi period. It might be, it also might be uh, sort of uh, early 18th century. Uh, but regardless, it's an unusual form. It's very attractive, and I like the way it was drawn. So, you know, uh, it, it, and it's not been repaired. These, these shaped pieces are always, it always seems they've been damaged and glued back and edges have been reattached. This one has nothing. It's clean as a whistle. So you might want to check that out. That's a nice thing. It ends on uh, Sunday also. And then this. Uh, uh, if you live in the U.S., I, I wouldn't recommend bidding on this. But if you're over in the EU and you like good ivory, this is a nice ivory uh, brush pot. Nice low relief carving. Um, um, he says 1900, 1920. I think it's older than that, judging by the smoothness of the carving and the way the faces are done. But at any rate, it closes on Tuesday. It's up to $63. That should be a five to $700 brush pot. All right, and then over here to this, this the silver enamel cup and set. Uh, this is really nice. This is modeled after the porcelain examples that were done during the Ming period, and some in the Kangxi. Often they were done as monochromes, but this one is done in, in it's silver with enamel. And I love the little dragon handles. This is a charming little thing right here. It's got a it's got a, a signature on the bottom. Here's some more of it. Uh, it may need a little bit of a cleaning up. You could go over this slightly with a, maybe a little bit of silver foam to get some of the the degris off of it. Uh, there's there's the, some of the silver how it should look. Uh, this thing is pretty dirty. But at any rate, uh, I would uh, if you like silver enamel, Chinese enamel, you want to look into this. It's up to two hundred and eleven dollars. It's got four days to, to go. It closes on Wednesday. Uh, uh, but if you if you're serious about these things, expect it'll bring a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. I would think it's a nice object. And these, do you remember the Blanc de Chine pots that went for $1,500 a couple of weeks ago? Well, apparently the guy didn't pay for those. I don't get it. Why would you not pay $1,500 for these? I thought that was cheap. But at any rate, they're back up. And if you like Blanc de Chine, I'm going to recommend them again. They didn't, you know, nothing changed since three weeks ago when I liked them, and I still like them. They're good. All right. They're only up to $12. They have eight days to go. They uh, close on February 9th. So you want to go over, drop a bit on those right now. Get them punched up there. All right. And then over here is another, uh, um, this was another home altar that was on Katawiki last week, and it sold. And there seems to be, the, the, in the last few weeks, we've seen a number of these, these, these shrines, these gilt wood lacquer shrines sell. <clears throat> and they all seem to sell for $600 to $1,200, depending on their elaborateness, for a standard sort of one that's under, you know, under a foot or so tall. 
And uh, this one brought $725. All right. And then uh, over here, this was a uh, uh, one of the Subas that was on uh, uh, last week on the Katawiki page. They had a big collection of Subas. There's more of them closing over the weekend. If, if you if you're interested in, in, in Japanese arms and armor and and, and, and accoutrements for the samurai and swords, sword fittings and whatnot. There's some great stuff. This was a very nice one. I like the little gilded inlaid uh, vase onto the iron. I like the shape of this a lot. And look at that, $170. That's a great object for $170. Uh, as I've said so many times, Japanese stuff is just so undervalued. And then over here there was this Benkrong, Benkrong where these Thai uh, bowls. This was a nice one. It had good colors. It was in nice condition. And the last one that I saw like this that was on eBay, it ended up selling for about $620. Uh, this one went reasonably, 366 bucks, And uh, it was 18 centimeters, about 6 inches, uh, yeah, roughly 7 inches in diameter. So it was a good-sized bowl. It apparently had no repairs. And uh, for $366, that was a good one. It's a 19th century example also. All right. And also this, this was a nifty buy. Kung Shi period underglazed blue tea caddy. Uh, a good looking one, all shaped sides, uh, didn't seem to have too much excessive fritting, had the brown dressing brown dressing around the rim and so forth. And uh, look at this, look what it sold for, $105, okay? As I, as I said the other, last week, we've been trying to put more and more things on, Katawiki, on the Katawiki side up that don't have reserves on them because I think it would be it's a good place to buy uh, um, if, if you're a dealer or a collector uh, and I think there's still some f favorable pricing there very favorable if you just go in and hit a bunch of things and give it a shot all right uh, but this was quite nice and 105 dollars is very inexpensive for these we've all seen these sell um, on on other sites or in live auctions and they always seem to bring 200 and a quarter 250 to 400 dollars a piece that was a nice one and it wasn't excessively fritted all right, and then on to this was that nifty little Ming bowl with the birds on it. This is a very provincial bowl, but it was nicely done. And it went for just $104, okay? It did have some rim frits here. Those aren't chips. That's just fritting on the edge. But 104 bucks, can't beat it, all right? There's some good buys on Katawiki. I've been lecturing them lately to, to, to push to get the guys to cut out the uh, reserves. And there is something coming up. I just saw it in my email, and we'll, I'll let you know more. Um, they're they're going to try to schedule some events, events of unreserved auctions and uh, try to promote that and get some attention. And I've also, a number of you have asked about Katawiki not shipping to certain countries, one of them being Canada and I think Australia. I've asked them why. I, well, if you can ship to the U.S., you can certainly ship to Canada. All right, and uh, then there was this pair of Kang Shi plates. These were really, really nice. I love the shapes of them. Uh, they were slightly different in their, in their patterns, but very similar in other ways. And uh, with these lotus-tipped rims on them and everything, they were nice. And $167, that was a nice buy for Kang Shi dishes, 167. You gotta check out Katawiki if you don't buy over there, you get some good buys. And then there was this, this Kang Shi rose water bottle. It had a restoration somewhere here around the top and in, in the tip. But it went very reasonably, $89, all right? So if you, you don't have the six or 700 to buy a period, one that's been un, undamaged, you, can, you could probably afford that. And then lastly was this. This was that dandy horse plate, late Ming horse plate with the farmer that I went on. I went, probably went on too much about it, but I really liked this. Thought it was terrific. And uh, I love the decoration at the top, and I love the way the farmer's standing off and the horses are just sort of ignore him and ignoring him and playing, doing their thing. And uh, this did very well. It brought $2,568, which was not a huge surprise. This was a, a very, very nice uh, looking plate in a very unusual pattern. And uh, in the end, it did quite well. So uh, that's it. And there's a bunch more uh, that we'll be adding now. Today, we'll be updating the, uh, the newsletter page on Bitamount. We updated the members pages uh, uh, yesterday. We did some updating the day before and a little bit at the end of the week, keeping that up to date. We removed the sales that have ended and added a bunch of new sales. Uh, check out the sale from uh, Zach's Galleries that just went up, as well as uh, Rob Michaels, and there's several others on there. That uh, The pages are pretty full. Um, they're getting there. We're waiting for Sotheby's and Christie's and Bonham's to... Uh, uh, to, to get to work over there. They just had some stuff from the Boada sale that did well and uh, um, actually brought crazy prices because it was Mario Boada. He was a famous New York decorator, the Prince of Chintz, at any rate. Um, that, that was that. So we're off for the weekend, and um, 
Thanks to all of you for uh, uh, listening and, and tuning in each week, and thanks so much for the emails and uh, uh, joining up with the member pages and subscribing and all that. We, we, we like to see, see it, and we're trying to help out. Okay, have a fine weekend, and see you all next week. Bye-bye.